OTM fam, man, what's up, man? Hey, hope everybody doing good in the trucking world, man. If you ain't know, thank you for joining the trucking mob. OTM trucking mob, man. But now I'm going to tell y'all how I got two trucks and one year of business. And what I did to get it, the sacrifices I made to get it, also the failures that led up to it. Where y'all want me to start at, man? God damn, man. I had to go to Walmart and get a fan, man. Listen, it get hot as hell, especially in the summer, man. But that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the video. We already never had fun, you know what I mean? So y'all know I got Riri. That's the first truck, the hot shot truck, because it was hard to get a semi because we had too much new stuff on our credit, right? And when I say we, I'm talking about me and my business partner. If y'all didn't know, I got a business partner. My It's a uh, co-ownership of the company. Uh, what you call it? Partnership? I don't know the, 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 the lingo and everything, but we started this company, right? And everybody was saying we had too much new stuff on our credit. Then they were saying we had to come up with 10000 to 20000 out of pocket. We didn't have that much money right out the gate, right? So we took the money from what he made from his job and what I made from my job, and we, put, we started putting stuff in motion. Getting the LLC, getting the DOT, getting the EIN, getting the uh, uh, getting everything DOT compliant. You know what I mean? Doing that whole the whole logistic part of the business, getting that up before we actually went and got a truck. So then it came to where we got the truck, right? But we didn't have a trailer. Cause at the time, if y'all remember, that's when hot shot trailers they was hard to find and they was marked way up. I'm talking about if you get a a, a 36 foot trailer. You was paying almost 20 grand, right? We wind up finding a 40 foot for that same price. Paid for that out the gate, financed the truck, and we was like, man, we're gonna make money. We're gonna make money, right? Hey, slow down, Bob, coming through that ass fan like that, Bob. But we was like, we're gonna make money, man. The first load that I took, we went down to Pennsylvania. I'm telling y'all, that was the worst. I left with no clothes, no cover. Uh, uh, no jacket. I literally was just like, man, we gotta go get some money. Wind up getting there, wind up getting stuck. And uh, I think those two months, I made a video about it. those two months was in the negative. We wasn't making money. We, we we was making money, but it was just paying the bills. It wasn't actually putting money in our pocket yet. So that's when I say negative. People got different mindset how they run their business. Some people are like, oh, you just breaking even. To me, that's negative because I haven't received any money from my company, right? So. Those two months we was negative. That was we started in November. So November, December, we was in the negative. November was a crazy month. December was a crazy month because I almost went to jail in Canada. Y'all seen that? Um, January came. We had a breakthrough. We had a breakthrough month then, and everything else been leading up to it. Right, been going good. So we stayed in the hot shot from November until let me see november december january february march april so we stayed in the hot shop for six months i'm talking about running hard like if if, if you know me and you see me on tiktok or, or or like i said you know me you know how we ran i was gone months on end come home for two or three days hit the road again right and that's what i needed to do to keep the business going to float so we did that april came right April came and we was like, man, we need to go get another truck on the road. Was it too fast? In some people's eyes, yes. Some people might say, oh, you should have you should have stayed in that one truck for a year, two years, build up money, build up equity, then we'll go ahead and get it, right? But that wasn't the case for us. We like, okay, we want to expand, right? For us to do what we need to do, we need to get another truck on the road and run it. We need to have two trucks on the road running. So we went and got a semi, right? Uh, they didn't do. We got it out of some place out of Mississippi, I believe. They didn't do no 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 credit check and everything like that. And they came back and they said, "Okay, boom, we got a truck." Reason why I say they came back is they didn't have trucks at the time because trucks was leaving left and right. It was a truck shortage, right? Not trucker shortage, because I don't know why people keep saying it's a trucker shortage, bro. You go, you bro. You try to park at a at a uh, at a fuel stop. At a truck stop before goddamn before goddamn five six o'clock, I guarantee you ain't got no parking. 
I don't know why they keep saying it's a trucking shortage. But anyways, back to what I was saying. We wind up going, we wind up getting that. And um, they call us back and they say, man, we got a, we got a, we got a freight liner for you. Right? Because I wanted a KW. I really wanted a KW. But I was like, I, I, I like freight liner. My dad had a freight liner. So I'll take a freight liner. They came back and said they had it. We went, we flew out to Mississippi. I think I had got off the road. I literally had just got off the road the day before I flew out. Flew out to Mississippi. Y'all see y'all seen the video? I flew out, picked it up. He flew back out. I drove the truck home. Put the sticker on and everything. Put the tag on and everything. We hit the road. Boom. Boom. Right? Now we only had one truck on the road. So we put that one truck on the road and everything was going good. I switched from the hot shot to this. Like I said, I was, at the time we only had one, one employee. And we was running. We was making good money. One the money that we were supposed to make. But it was all right money for the truck. Right? It would have been better if we had two trucks. The sacrifice I had to make. I, me and my family ain't never been on a family vacation. Me and my brother go on vacation. Like fishing trips and stuff like that. But as a whole family, we never been on a vacation. So I was like, okay, cool. We gonna go on a vacation. I'm gonna plan it, right? I start planning everything. Money start coming in. Everybody put in their part. And uh, that week, I couldn't come home. I couldn't come home. I tried to do everything I could to get home, to get home, to get uh, to get to the vacation. I couldn't come home. So we wind up canceling the vacation, right? And I don't know about y'all, but I'm a man of, of, of honor. So what that mean to me is. If I promise you something, I try to stand on my promises. If I say, hey, I'm going to be here, I try to be there. If I say, hey, I'm going to do this, I'm going to try to do it. If I say, hey, I don't know that, but I can get, I can find somebody that do know that, believe me, I might not get back right back to you, but I guarantee you I'm, I'm, I'm going through sources to try to get that information to get to you. That's why I say I'm a man of honor. So it was like... It hurted me because I lied to them in my mindset. They was like, oh, no, nah, we understand. You know, it's your first year of business. Um, nobody's mad at you. But I'm like, y'all don't understand. I'm really, I really told y'all I was going to get home for this vacation. I planned something that was going to be special and I wasn't able to make it home. Right. And that's, not, that's, and that was the first time, but it wasn't the last time where I promised something and I wasn't able to get back home when I was supposed to. Like it'd been a little petty stuff after that. Right. And that's what you're going to have to do in, in business. If you want to succeed in business, you're going to you're gonna have to make sacrifice. But I'm telling you right now, don't make promises when you're going on the road. And they could be little promises like, hey, I'll be back this time. We're going to go give something to eat. Hey, I'm going to be back this time. We can go watch a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, don't make promises because you never know when you're going to come back home. Just when you get home, make those moments special. Make those special. So that being said, that was the sacrifice I had to make. But... We wind up putting two trucks on the road. Bam. Right? I'm telling y'all, man, it, it was lovely. It The stress was gone. The stress was gone. Like, those six months, I'm talking about, there was the stress, stressful months of my life, right? Because it was like we were trying to build, but at the same time, I wasn't seeing, I wasn't seeing the reward from what I was doing. It was just like grind, 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 pay the bill, pay the bill, pay the bill, pay the bill. Get a little bit. Now I go back to business. You know what I mean? I wasn't I wasn't receiving the reward. So we had both trucks on the road. Everything was going good. Making money. I'm talking about good money too. Like I would say this. I was on track to make 70 grand in one month. Just with two trucks. The way they was running. I'm talking about we was running, running, right? And um I learned in business you can't always cater to people's needs. And what I mean, let me, and I'm going to go, I'm going to elaborate. Y'all know I like to elaborate when I speak on stuff. What I mean by that is, say you got an employee, right? You try to run, you try to run your business not as an employee, a boss. You try to run it as, okay, I'm a person just like you is, right? And that's what I did. That's what I did. And that's what I felt like I messed up at because I gave too much leeway. And I should have brought it back like, hey, okay, look, we first year business. This is what we do. We got to run. You can't be here. You can't be there. You can't be home all the time. That's how I should have ran it. But I'm like, no, you know, nothing against the guy. Nothing against the guy. We still cool. That's still, that's still my, that's still my buddy. Right. We knew each other since we was kids. Yeah, yeah, that's still my buddy. But we talking business now. You got to separate business from uh, friendship. 
So I should have did it that way, but instead I was like, you know, I don't when I when I was an employee, I would want people to look out for me. Right. So that's how I came. That's how I look. I look at it from a driver standpoint. I haven't looked at it from a logistics standpoint yet until I'm out of a truck. And I don't know when that is. Hopefully soon, but I probably always be in a truck. Y'all gonna say I'm contradicting myself, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Cause think about it. I want to be in a truck. I want to be out of a truck so I can deal more with family. Have yeah, more family time, right? But at the same time, bro, I've been around trucks my whole life. I don't know if I can survive outside of a truck. Like, I'm always going to be a part of trucking. You get what I'm saying? That's why I say that. But I look at it from a, 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 a driver's standpoint. So if my driver say, hey, I need to get home. My family need this and this. Okay, cool, bro. I'm going to try to get you a load going home, right? I'm going to try to get you money going that way. Hold on, hold on one second. I'm getting a call.